In this video, we're going to continue working with Boxman and the armature we created. And we're going to set the armature so that the joints can only bend at certain angles. Just want to show you something here. When we have the box selected in object mode, then I select the armature in object mode. I can click to go to edit mode, which is for adding on, extruding, sizing, and positioning the bones. But when you want to go to move the bones, you go into pose mode. Now in pose mode, you can move the bones. Now I'm just going to switch to this view. I'm going to select that arm, right, right clicking, and I'm going to hit R to rotate. Now when I'm in this view, that's the angle that lets me rotate the arm. I actually don't want to do that angle. I just want to say, no, that one can't move that way. So I'll just click and leave it there. Notice if I rotate this one, right, all the bones after it rotate with it, right? That's the nature of this extruded armature, right? They're all connected and linked. Now, to put this back in the regular spot, I can hit A twice to select all, and go Pose, Clear Transform, All. You're going to see me do this a lot, right? To put the bones back into what they call the rest pose. Okay, this is our rest pose, because it's the pose we had set up in edit mode. Now, let's restrict the motion of this arm that you're seeing right here. Let me just go to a straight top view. Let me restrict this one so it can only move like this. Okay, so pose, clear, all. That one goes back. Now, let's zoom in here on that joint just to take a look at how to do this. You're going to see here with the armature selected and the data tab, and I had scrolled down a bit, and I had shown the axes. Now, these were the axes of the bones themselves. You're going to see they don't share the world XYZ, they have their own little XYZ. The Y always points down the length of the bone, okay, and then you have your X and your Z, depending how you extruded. Now, what I want to do here is I can see that I want this bone only to rotate around the Z axis. So this joint here, the Z, that's how I want this one to swing out towards us, okay, and back. So what I can do is I can put a constraint on this bone. So here we go. Have the bone selected. Go to the Bone Constraint tab. Okay, it's the bone with the little chain for constraints. Add bone. Limit rotation. Now with the limit rotation constraint, you get to choose which angles you want to limit. So what I want to do here is I don't want it pivoting on the X. So I'm going to say limit X to 0, 0. The bone is locked there. I don't want it rotating around the y-axis. That would be like spinning on its axis. So I'm going to say, no, nope, none of that. But I'll just leave the z open. With the z open now, you can see one thing. If I go into a front view and I select rotate, it won't rotate up and down. That would be rotating on the, whoops, I forgot to set this. Set that to local too. What the local means is it means that the axes I'm using are the bones local, its own axes. Okay. Either way, it still does the same thing here. When I go to rotate, it won't rotate on the X. But if I go to a top view, okay, so there's a top view of my person, and now I click to rotate, it will rotate in that direction, okay, freely with no limits. Now if you wanted, you could put some limits here. So you could say limit, and you could change angles around. Oh, that's a weird one. You could change limits around so that, you know, the bone can only move within certain uh, angles, but we're just going to leave that to zero and zero for now and keep it off. So it's free to move. Notice if I still rotate this one, that arm still moves with it. That's still fine. Uh, now the shoulder. How should a shoulder move? Well, let me take that bone. Let me add an angle constraint to it. Limit rotation. Local space. And looking at its axes here, the X, Y, Z, I know a shoulder, it can rotate on the X axis, and it can also pivot on the Z. But I'm not going to let it turn on the Y. Even though you argue in real life it can, just for this one, I'm not going to do it. So what I'll do is I'll block out the Y, and I'll leave the X. Whoops, I did limit location. Bad. Limit rotation. I'll limit the Y, and I'll leave the X and the Z open and switch it to local. Okay, so it's using the bones local axes. Now with this one, 
you can see that if I hit rotate, it's free to rotate in the X. And if I go to the bird's eye view, it's also free to move in the Z. Now, one thing to notice is this part of the arm, when you hit rotate, it's still only allowed to rotate around its local Z. So it's still moving like you would want it to move. Okay, so that's pretty good. You can go to the bird's eye view, and you can still move it, right? And so that's basically how you limit your skeleton to move only in the angles you want. You may have realized here that when you're in a 3D view and you try to rotate these things with the R, you get very weird angles. Uh, when you're posing, being in the bird's eye view is good, and being in the top view okay, is also good. For your poses, it keeps things nice and easy, right? Okay, that's basic limiting. Um, all these others here, you could set the head. Let me do the head one here just so it can head bob only. You'll see here on the local axes, this would be the x-axis. I want to allow bobbing so it can come forward and back. So let me add a constraint, limit rotation. Let me lock out the y, lock out the z, and I'll allow the x. And switch to local. Now when I test this out, a little rotate, you can see the head is only going to be allowed to bob up and down, okay? which is what we want. Now, of course, I've messed up my pose. Let's hit A twice, select all, pose, clear, all. What we're going to do in the next video is we will take our awesome box man and I will attach the actual objects, the arms and the upper arm and the head and the body to the bones here so that when we move the bones, we actually move our model.